You know, one lesson that I would sort of take away, which I, I do kind of wish I had more perspective on this at the time, but that is that um, any failures you experience are, are just very likely, you know, redirections to a different opportunity. Um, we all experience failures, for sure. And I can remember acutely some of mine, but, um, you know, like even, even missed diagnosis. Um, I mean, a bunch of different things, but yeah, I had, I was a fairly new attending and I had uh, sent a baby out of the nursery um, uh, who I said that the physical exam was normal. And the doc who saw the baby in clinic a couple of days later called me back in more of a scolding tone than I would have appreciated. <laughs> but to basically say that like, I missed a clavicle fracture on this baby and um, you know, how could I possibly miss that and whatever. And the bottom line, thankfully for me, is that a clavicle fracture in a newborn is not dangerous. And it doesn't require actually any treatment. It heals up on its own. But in the process of healing, it creates some sizable lump over that area. So it is certainly helpful for people to know if you feel like that happened during delivery, it's, it's, let, it's good to let people know, you know, what's coming up next. But, but it didn't turn out to have, you know, an adverse health effect for the baby or whatever. Um, and so, but I didn't really, you know, I mean, it felt like a fail, you know, somebody's calling you who's got more experience, like, essentially, like, you know, you idiot, you missed it, you know, yeah. and, but at the same time, um, I felt like if I can just take a step back from the emotions of that and be like, okay, that's informative feedback. It wasn't delivered the way I would have liked. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's informative feedback. And, and that amongst like other things has been kind of, you know, one stepping stone for me on, okay, so I missed that, but like, how can I teach the students and residents about clavicle fractures so that they don't miss that, you know? And then, and then how can I teach about physical exam in general so that not only clavicle fractures don't we miss, but we don't miss like other stuff and other more critical things. And, and you know, one thing sort of led to another and then I developed a website and then I wrote a book about physical findings and like things have happened. Would that all have happened if I didn't get scolded about the clavicle fracture? Like, I don't know, maybe. But um, if I'd gotten like all kind of bent out of shape about that, um, it wouldn't have served to be helpful for me. And, you know, also when I was, a, I mean, I can think of a whole bunch of experiences, but also like when I was a resident, a pediatric resident, and I was a little bit unsure of, you know, what I wanted to do. Um, I thought I wanted to go into just regular pediatric practice. But I, I still didn't really have a direction. So I applied to be chief president, which is kind of a, a little bit of like a prestigious, I guess, sort of thing among residents. But you stay an extra year, um, so you do an extra year. And, uh, and I didn't get the position. There were four applicants, and no, three applicants and two positions. I didn't get it. And in retrospect, I mean, that, you know, that worked out okay because that opened the door for me then to become an attending at Stanford where I actually got paid more as an attending than I would have as a chief resident. And what I didn't really know about the chief resident job at the time is that it's a lot of administrative stuff. It's a lot of um, scheduling people into clinics. It's a lot of scheduling conferences and stuff. And I do administrative work, but I don't love it. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it probably was really better for me that I did not take on that role because um, it wouldn't have really, served me. Um, and, you know, same thing around that time is, like I just said, I wanted to be a general pediatrician working in clinic. That's what I thought I was going to do. And I thought, because I had been in Virginia for, well, for both uh, med school and also for college. I was in Harrisonburg for college. And uh, I thought, like, this is going to be my West Coast adventure. I grew up in the Midwest. I went to school on the East Coast, like California. And so when I get to the end of my residency, I'm like, all right, I think I should, you know, start interviewing back on the East Coast somewhere. And a friend of mine um, knew of a practice, a very reputable practice in South Carolina. So he says, like, why don't you come out here and, you know, whatever. So, sure. And I mean, their recruiter contacted me and we scheduled a time and, you know, pediatrics, unlike business, 
like they don't pay your way. You know, if you want to interview, it's your own dime to like buy the ticket and whatever. So, you know, I bought my plane ticket, I put on my little suit, you know, and I show up at the practice at like 9.30 or whatever the time was. And like their waiting room was full of patients. And I walked up to the receptionist. I'm like, hi, I'm Dr. AB and I'm here for, and she's like, who are you? <laughs> what are you here for? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh boy, it's not off to a good start, you know? And it turned off, it turned out that the recruiter hadn't told anyone in the practice I was coming. I fly across the country to go meet with people and they got a like, they got a long list of patients to see. I'm sure I didn't make a very good impression on him because I was, you know, seemingly just dropping in in the middle of one of their clinics to have an interview. And they certainly didn't make a very good impression on me because if they can't even communicate with their own recruiter, like, that's a problem. And I ended up having, you know, dinner or something with my friends who invited me out there. And then I flew home. And I'm like, okay, that was, you know, a failure. But, um, but I mean, that opened the door for me to stay here. And I met my husband here and he's from here. And here we are 25 years later.